Hi, my name is Gabriel. I'm the CEO of Digital Silk. We're an agency focused on growing brands online. And today I want to look at Netflix's site versus Hulu's site. We are not going to be debating on the quality of the content and who has a better movie or shows, but rather we're going to look at the usability of these sites, their conversion funnel and their SEO value. We want to see which site is doing a better job at engaging users and building brand awareness organically. So let's start with Netflix. Here I have Netflix's public site. As you could see, the navigation is practically just a sign in and uh, pick a language. You see a very concise message, unlimited movies, TV shows, and more, watch anytime, cancel anytime. So I think that shows nice value to the user where they could start and stop at any time they like. And there's a good call to action right under it, enter your email address. Now, most of the world has heard of Netflix. So I guess their concerns would be if I sign up, when can I cancel? And that's what they're addressing here. As I scroll down, it tells me ways I could enjoy Netflix. On the TV, download your shows, fantastic features, watch it on any platform, on your mobile app, your tablet, or your TV. And you can create a separate profile for kids, of course. Then you have a nice FAQ, your CTA is down here. But what if I want to browse what shows they have? What if I want to see if they have a show of my interest? Do they list any featured shows or new shows? Pretty much the only engagement factor here is to sign up and get started. I think it would show more value to users if they were able to also browse the latest movies or the movie titles they have. Netflix has a lot of movies and shows that are produced by its own brand, and it'd be nice to showcase those. Instead, it's telling me how I could use the brand, uh, I could use the app, and how I have control over it, which are very good value points. But give me a taste of the content. Whereas companies such as HBO and Showtime may give you a taste to browse their catalog, I don't see that option here. Let's take a look at Netflix's SEO value. Here I'm logged into Ahrefs. It tells us uh, the domain rating for a site, how many referring domains it has to it, what keywords it's ranking for and how many keywords, and what's the organic traffic value. So how much you would have paid pay per click if they were doing it, you know, if they're paying for this SEO value. So Netflix is a very high domain rating of 91, and it has 245,000 referring domains. It's ranking for 13.7 million keywords. Its organic traffic value is 156 million per month. What are those keywords? Well, most of those keywords would be, you know, the brand itself, Netflix, which it obviously ranks position one on Google for. Uh, however, the keyword difficulty is very high. And look at that. Each month, there are over 15 million searches for Netflix alone in the, in the globe. What if we took Netflix away? You could see here the keywords that it's ranking for. Here you could see that it's ranking for some of the shows itself. Notice it's not even optimized for those titles. I mean, look, look at that URL there. It's not even optimized for that title. But because Netflix has such a high domain authority, its SEO does not need to be perfect and it will still rank. So here's Queen's Gambit. It's a Netflix original show. Obviously, that's where you'll find it. You could see the content here that's visible to Google. So it ranks for a lot of the shows that it carries. And that's where its ranking comes from. Let's check out the word streaming. Does it rank for a keyword like streaming or videos on demand? It does rank for longer tail keywords with streaming, about video streaming, not so much. So it's ranking for the shows and its own brand, but it's not ranking for keywords that people have been looking up, such as video on demand or video streaming, et cetera. Let's take a look at the next site, Hulu. A main investor in Hulu is Disney and Disney owns ESPN. Now, it looks really crowded up here, right? I mean, look at Netflix, how nice and clean. You got a main message, you got a supporting message, you got a call to action. Look at Hulu. It is a lot of content up here. And the first thing they want to do is get the bundle live versus pre-trial, all right? All the TV you love, and they give you the categories up here. So if we click on a category, 
You could see different movies. That's a nice touch. At least I get a sense of what are the titles that they carry. And that, I think, shows value. And Hulu shows other things here as well. Whereas Netflix says you could play our app on any device, Hulu here goes through to say, look, we offer live TV as well, and you have different plans. And again, they emphasize you can't sell any time. So it's nice that they put the pricing right here. And you could have a call to action right there, select. And you have some more stuff to add on here. I think this could use some better colors. I mean, this is kind of drab looking down here. But overall, I think they do a nice job. They take a different approach to showing value to the users. They're showing the users uh, titles that they could select from, and they're showing them the flexibility in their pricing plan. Let's see how their SEO is doing. We see they have a domain rating of 88. Now there's a big difference between 91 and 88 with these high numbers. They have only 100,000 referring domains and they have a traffic value worth $10.7 million per month. If we were to see which keywords they rank for, let's exclude their own name. You can see they have 6.8 million searches a month globally for their name. Similar to Netflix, they do rank for some of the titles that they carry. Uh, but let's see if they also rank for generic categories like streaming videos. Uh, they do not rank for the term streaming video. They do, do they rank for video on demand? They rank for titles on a long tail version of video on demand, but not for the video on demand keyword itself. Comparing these two sites, they take two very approaches to showing their demographics value. Netflix focuses on how you could use their site uh, or their app on flexibility of the platforms and you could download it and you could have profile control for your kids. Whereas Hulu is showing you hey, look, we'll bundle it in, and here's a taste of the titles we have, and uh, there's other benefits we add, like live TV as well, and they show you their pricing right up front, which I really like. In terms of SEO, Netflix has a stronger brand presence. It ranks for more category names. However, both sites could do a better job at trying to rank for generic categories to drive that brand awareness higher up. Hope you enjoyed this. See you next time.